Okay, so now that we've introduced what a discrete time dynamical system is and where it comes from, we can manipulate these sorts of models to answer lots of different questions. All right, let's we'll start with an example. Example I've used a couple times now of this bacteria population growing in a petri dish. Okay, and last time we said, okay, we can model this with a discrete time dynamical system. Right. This model looks like this, ET plus one, two, ET, where, you know, T e is the population of bacteria on this petri in millions of cells, and T is measured in hours. Okay? So then, you know, when you're looking at the system, remember that we have this function f of, right? That's sitting on the right-hand side, right? This is of t plus one is equal to f of p, right? So this function is called the updating function for our system. Okay? And so the way the model works is, you know, starting with initial population, right? Initial population t0, it gives you the population an hour later, t1, and then you can keep going with the population an hour after that, and you can keep going, right? You can keep counting the population every hour by applying this uh, discrete time dynamic system over and over again, okay? And so these, you know, the map from your initial population at time zero the population an hour later is that updating function f. Okay, and then to go from p1 to p2, you apply f again. So to map from p0 straight to p2, you could also just compose f twice, right? So this function composition maps from your initial population to population two, hour, uh, two hours later. Right? So that's p of two, in this case, is f of f of zero, okay? And so by composing our updating function with itself over and over and over again, we can find, you know, we can just iterate through this discrete time dynamical system. And you could define a dynamic system every two hours by just having, you know, e of t plus two would be f of f of p t, right? And so you could have a dynamic system that's counting every two hours, and that would just be this dynamic system composed twice, okay? Let's do an example where, where we just step through this model and, and just kind of see what's what's going on. Okay? So in this case, scroll on my other screen, and it's not working. Sorry about that. Okay. It's just broke. Okay, so let's say we start with uh, P0. All right, let's start with one million, okay? Where our discrete time, dynamical, discrete time dynamic system says that P1 will be two times P0, or two. All right, and then P2 will be two times P1, which is now two times two, or four, right? And then P3 will be two times P2, or two times four, which gives us eight, right? So we just step through by applying this function, this update function over and over again. We start at one million, after one hour, we're at two million. After two hours, right, that's four million. Three hours gives us eight million. And this is our solution output, right? So we're plotting the time in hours versus the population in millions. And this is a different sort of plot for a discrete time dynamic system than the ones uh, we showed in the last video, which mapped uh, population at time t to population at time t plus one. This one actually maps a solution trajectory through this discrete time dynamic starting with some initial condition, and then iterating forward through time, okay? So what happens if we start with a, dis a different initial condition, right? This is going to step through the same discrete time dynamical system, but uh, it'll go in at a different trajectory, okay? So let's say we start at half a million, okay, 0 0.5, then P1 would be, two times P0, which now gives us one million. And then P2 would be two P1, which gives us two million. 
and then p3 would be 2p2 which gives us 4 and then p4 would be 2p3 which gives us right and we can keep going and so this uh, trajectory looks very similar to the previous one right if I plot it side by side on the same plot you can see they have almost the same trajectory but they happen at different times right because we started in a different position so they're distinct solutions to the same dynamical system but because they started with a different initial condition they're different solutions okay and so you can find a general solution to this right maybe you don't want to do this every single time so let's find a general solution to this discrete time dynamic system that will just give us the population at any time t. Okay? And when the dynamic system is simple enough, you can find a general solution just by looking for a pattern. Right? A pattern in our, you know, P1, Pns. Okay? In this case, you know, if we start, right, recall that our, our map, our discrete time dynamic system is P of T plus 1 is P2 times P. So if we start at P0, then P1 is going to be 2 times P0. Okay? P2 is going to be 2P1, which if we plug in P1 is 2P0, that gives us 2 times 2P0, or 2 squared P0. Right, P3 is going to be 2 times P2, which is, according to this, 2 times 2P1, which according to P1 being 2P0, this gives us 2 times 2 times 2P0, two or 2 cubed P0. Right? And we can keep going with this. Maybe you can see the pattern now that every time we step through the dynamic system, we multiply P0 by another factor of 2. So after P steps of the system, Right? We will have multiplied by 2 t times. That would be 2 to the t, t0. Okay? And so this is our general solution. Right? This is our general solution. And I say general because a specific solution, right? Specific solution to this, a particular solution, depends on the initial condition, right? Initial condition, right? So each initial condition defines a different solution, and all the solutions have this general form, right? So let's go back up to, to these two. So in this case, we started with 1, and then we went up to 2, 4, 8, right? And so by following our formula that we found below, P of T is equal to to the t times p0, and in this case p0 is 1, right? So this just becomes 2 to the t, right? And that's our solution. But in this case, right, in red, we started at half a million, so our p of t is 2 to the t p0, right? So it's half a million times 2 to the t, right? So that would be the solution given this initial condition, right, you can see it. This initial condition gives you this different solution, okay? But they have the same general form. And when the dynamic system is simple enough, you can find that general form just by looking for a pattern in the uh, sequences, in the sequences. Right, so let's do another example. Let's go back to this uh, discrete time dynamic system that described tree heights, right? Remember our model for the tree heights at one year, right? We said that the tree height in the year after, one year later, is the tree height this year plus one meter, right? Where h is in meters, e is in year, okay? Every time you have a discrete time dynamic system, you have uh, input units and kind of your, your state variable units, right? So our time units, and our state units. Okay? Read my notes over here. Okay. Right. So, in this case, remember we saw that uh, we could just step forward by starting an initial condition and just mapping it through time. Okay? So in this case, 
let's say we started right let's say we start we have a tree is you know 10 meters tall right then next year according to this model it'll be 11 meters tall okay that's what our model predicts okay right and it predicts that because let's say you know let's say this is our h of zero and this is our h1 the height a year later right this map says h1 is equal to h0 plus one right so in this case h1 is n one with 11 meters okay but we could also ask questions like what was the height last year right because we're assuming that our trees are always following this rule this uh, this updating function every year it grows by one meter we can ask what it was last year right we don't have to go forwards in time we can also go backwards in time, right so let's call this h of minus one blue and blue right so according to our equation right h zero would be h minus one plus one right the height it was a year ago grew by one to give us the height now so if we want to know what the height a year ago was, we have to solve this backwards, right? We have to solve for h minus one. We subtract one from both sides, and we get this system where h minus one is given by h of zero minus one. If you want to go back in time, you have to subtract a meter each year. Okay? And so, you know, when we had uh, h t plus one, right? This is our updating function, f of h t. And when we're going in the other direction, right, h t minus one, this would be the inverse update. Okay, so this is our update function. Right, when we're going forwards in time, and this here is our inverse update, right, which tells us how we would update in backwards time. Okay, so you can think about the discrete time dynamic system as not only going forwards in time, right, from your initial heights, h0, right, you can go forwards in time to h1 by applying update function. You can keep going forwards in time, right, height two years from now, by applying the update function a second time, and so on, right? And, you know, this is forwards time, forward time, right, in this direction. But you could also go backwards in time, right? If you know this inverse update function, right, we can go from our height this year to our height last year, right? We can go backwards in time. And if we were back in time and we wanted to go forward in time, we would just use our update function, okay? These discrete time dynamic systems go back and forth in time. All you need is one initial point to reference your solutions. So either going forwards in time or backwards in time. And you know, just just by convention, we usually think about the initial conditions and then solving these things in forward time. But there's no reason you can't go backwards. In time. Okay, let's do an example of uh, just stepping through this function. Okay, so in this case, let's say we start again with h of zero is 10 meters. Okay, then our function says our discrete time dynamic system. Our update function says h1 will be h0 plus 1, that gives us 11, right? And then h2 would be h1 plus 1, or 12, right? And then h3 would be 13, and so on, right? So we'll start at 10 at time 0. A year later, it'll be 11. A year later, it'll be 12, then 13, right? So it's just going to step through, climbing up 1 meter a year. And this is one solution to our discrete time dynamic system, starting with initial condition 10 meters. Okay? And so if we started with a different initial condition, we'll get a different solution. That will look pretty similar, but starting from a different point. Okay, so let's say we started at 9 meters, right? Then a year later, it will be 10. H2 will be 11. H3 will be 12 h4 will be 13 meters right so if we plot this one we'll start at 9 and we'll go up in the same way but at a later time right so this is a different solution to the same initial uh, to the same discrete time dynamic system 
given a different initial condition. Okay, and again, we can find a general solution to this because it's simple enough, right? A general solution by looking for a pattern in our sequence. Okay, so again, let's start with our rule. H of t plus one is h t over four plus one. So starting at some initial height h zero, while height the next year is gonna be one plus h zero, right? And then height the year after that at h uh, at year two, going to be height at year one plus one, which is height at year zero plus one plus one, right? Or two plus h zero. Okay, and then height a third year would be height second year plus one, which is height the first year plus one plus one, which is height the very uh, first year you started counting plus one plus one plus one, or three plus your initial height. Right, and you can see that uh, however many years it's been since we started counting, that's how many meters it's from. Right, so height at your t, right, that's going to be t plus h0. Okay, because after t years, you've grown two meters, since you grow one meter a year. Okay, and again, notice that the solution, right, this depends on your initial condition. Right? So each initial condition defines a different solution of this general form, where the only difference between them is that it's going to be this H0 that's sitting right here. Okay? And so this, you know, a discrete time dynamical system, you know, these models have a family of solutions, where the only thing distinguishing members of that family are the initial conditions. Okay? And so in the next video, we will cover more about how to understand how these solution families behave for discrete time dynamical systems and get a better sense of how we can use that information to, to better inform our model prediction.